Since ChatGPT came out in November of 2022, the academic world and educators have been trying to figure out how it is that they are going to combat the usage of AI among students. You might've seen articles in the news or educators talking about this on TikTok, but today we are gonna be talking about the do's and the don'ts of using AI as a student. So that way you can be using it efficiently rather than using it for the purposes that educators are so worried about, which is plagiarism. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I am a third year PhD student in history and African-American studies, as well as a digital entrepreneur. I run multiple businesses, including my YouTube channel where I share educational tips, as well as vlogs about my life as a graduate student and resources to help you through your education journey. And with today's video, we're gonna be talking even more specifically about AI. This is an area of education I've wanted to discuss for a while. And although I am not an AI scholar, I have worked with many students that have applied to programs in AI ethics. I am a digital entrepreneur and have interacted and used AI systems within my own research. And so today I wanna to share with you some of the ways that I think that you can best utilize AI while also ensuring that you are maintaining your integrity as a writer, as a student, and not falling into some of the pitfalls that I see educators concerned about with students today. And in order to do that, I'm going to be talking a little bit throughout today's video about our sponsor, which is Cactus AI. Cactus AI is the perfect all-in-one platform for students looking to utilize AI within their daily systems. And I'm going to be showing you throughout this video how it is that we can do that. Now let's go ahead and get into it. First and foremost, do not use AI to write your essays. One thing I don't really like about AI is that it writes in really simple simplistic prose. Secondly, it doesn't really offer very much evidence to support its claims. Professors are increasingly paying attention to the use of AI, especially in writing assignments. So avoid using AI systems to write your papers. You want to ensure that you are writing original work that is well supported and that contains your unique voice. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be taking you into ChatGPT in order to show you some examples of essay formats and why I think that you should be careful when using AI systems. I am going to go ahead and use the example of write me a college level essay of around 1,000 words on the role of women in the American revolution. It's going to go ahead and generate the essay. I gave it some guidance on how I wanted it written. And as you can see from the very beginning, this is a really poor intro. As a current TF for a class here at Yale, if a student turned in an essay with this kind of hook, it just wouldn't get very many points. This would be a very basic essay. And another example is that as it's generating this, it's giving very few examples, but they're not very tangible. So it doesn't connect to the secondary literature. It doesn't also connect to specific examples. So I'm going to go ahead and say regenerate with specific secondary and primary source examples and just see if that narrows it down. Again, it's giving really basic responses. So for example, it's using this Abigail Adams quote, remember the ladies. Again, I just don't think that this would fly in a college level course. This gives you a good summary of how to get started with essays and what points you might want to make. And even for example, it mentions the secondary literature, mentions Carol Birkin, but again, doesn't really offer very much analysis. Therefore, this is something I really believe should be done by the student. While I believe that you should not be using AI in order to write your essays, there are some tools that I'm going to be giving you in the rest of this video on how you can use them strategically. So that way that you can use them to help you with your process and help you avoid writer's block. Now that you've seen an example of how not to use AI to write your essays, let's go ahead and look at some tools that will help you write your essays. Do use AI to help develop your ideas. One of the best evolutions about AI is helping you bring large pieces of material and information and be able to summarize and condense them and consolidate that information for your own use. And here's an example of where I think that AI systems could really work well. One thing that is asked of most students is to come up with a really formative research question. So you can use AI systems in order to help you develop these ideas. And here is how. All right, so here we have Cactus AI's discussion questions features. Cactus AI has so many different features that I'll be looking at throughout this video, but I'm going to go ahead and start here by asking the AI generator to come up with a few 
research questions related to the role of women in the history of the American Revolution. And now it's going to go ahead and generate a response. And I have to say, as a history researcher, asking a question about the variation in region and social class is actually a fairly good research question. How did women contribute to the war effort and what impact did their contributions make to the outcome of the American Revolution? Here, I would just build upon that and ask about the role of women as loyalists, as women as patriots, and how it is that we think that their political involvement actually contributed to the American Revolution. So you can talk about how they contributed to ideological debates or how it is that they actually contribute to the physical war effort. So I think that's a really good question. What challenges did women face in participating in the American Revolution? I would also stretch this question and use it as a solid foundation to ask not just what challenges did women face in participating in the American Revolution, but even more so, how is it that they contributed to the war effort at home? For example, Many women were left as shopkeepers or as plantation managers during the American Revolution when their husbands or their sons had to go off to participate in the war effort. I really love the questions that it came up with. I would just use that and expand upon it if these are things that you're going to be using for your essays. This is just such a great way to begin thinking about research questions, especially if you're a little stuck on how it is that you might want to develop it, but you could use these questions as a foundation and then use that and the course material in order to develop a more narrow or thorough question. And now for a quick break to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Cactus AI. Cactus AI is an all-inclusive student platform that will assist with your writing, citation management, and ideation. This is the ultimate platform to help you develop your ideas. They have tools to improve your writing as well as to help you be a more efficient student. They have things such as the text summarizer, which I'll talk about in the next section of today's video, but they also have systems specifically dedicated to STEM students that are looking to develop code or are looking for assistance with specific questions. They have features such as a citation creator or even a system to help you review your resume. They have so many different offerings and that is why I thought that they would be a perfect partner to work with on today's video. AI should be used as a supportive tool, not a shortcut. And Cactus AI will give you the tools so that way you can work alongside these systems to improve your work. AI should not be a one-stop shop, but it certainly can help you improve the efficiency of your workflow as well as the accuracy of your writing. Furthermore, AI systems can actually make information more accessible, especially for those that are having difficulty grasping really challenging concepts. So think of Cactus AI as your virtual assistant to help you improve your grades as well as to overall improve your productivity and efficiency. So if you're interested in checking out Cactus AI, then go ahead and check out the links down below. They have a special link for you to sign up. They have a monthly or or an annual plan for students. And thank you so much to them for sponsoring today's video. Now let's move on to the next point, which is that you should not use AI to skip your readings. As a teaching assistant here at Yale, I work with undergraduate students. And something that I've noticed over the last couple of semesters of teaching and over the last couple of years in general is that there is a general misconception that to review a book or a reading or to show up in class is to grasp the main arguments that are being made. And while that is a major part of reading and comprehension while you are in higher education in particular, it is not the only point. And this is where AI tends to miss a bit of information because if you asked for it to review a particular book or to summarize an article, it's going to look for the key points that are being made, but is not going to specifically look for things like usage of evidence and tone and writing style and accessibility. And this is why it's important for you to do the readings yourself. If however, you are trying to find a system to read more efficiently, that I highly recommend going ahead and checking out my video on how to read like a PhD student. I have multiple sections on how it is that you should be reading for class versus how to read for research and specifically how to skim efficiently. But that leads me to my next point, which is to use AI to summarize 
texts. Not only will AI have the capability to summarize pieces of literature or texts, monographs that you might have to read for your field of study, or even to summarize a scientific paper and put it into more simplistic terms to help you comprehend, but it can also summarize your notes. And this is something that I think that we as students should be utilizing, especially as you're preparing for exams. For example, you can plug in your notes into an AI system such as the text summarizer with Cactus AI in order to establish the highline points that were made during that lecture or within that reading and will ultimately help you just be a bit more efficient with your time. Furthermore, it can actually summarize your notes in order to actually indicate, for example, definitions for things and also compare that to definitions online. So while you should never skip the reading, AI systems can help you summarize text that you have read before. And this is where I recommend that you think of AI as a virtual assistant of sorts. This is a tool that's going to help you consolidate information to save you time, but should not be seen as something that allows you to cut corners. It just allows you to consolidate and save time. The next point that I'm going to make, I believe is the most important one of this entire video, which is to not allow AI to develop your arguments. I'm gonna tell you a little story. I met with a professor a few weeks ago who said he had been teaching this policy course for years. He'd been teaching it for decades. Every time he's taught this course, he has an assignment where he has his students look at a particular Supreme Court case. And he has them look at the transcripts and the documents in order to write their own decision as part of their assignment. This was a case related to segregation. And the official opinion of the court back in the mid 20th century was to maintain segregationist policies. What this professor had found was that most responses in the past several years, only about two students would actually write in the affirmative. Most would write a dissenting opinion in opposition to segregation. However, this year, a significant percentage of the students in this class wrote in the affirmative. This professor believes that this is because students were using chat GBT. One of the ills of AI that we've known for a while and that we know about algorithms is that they are biased. They are biased based on those who create them. They are biased based on the set of information that is available online. And ultimately the decision of the court is what chat GPT and other AI systems knew. This is likely what resulted in students writing papers in the affirmative or in parallel with the actual opinion of the court. Back when I was in college, I read Algorithms of Oppression, which I highly recommend that every person check out and that we all consider because ultimately the people that develop these AI systems and these programs are biased. We have implicit bias. We have beliefs that come out in the way that these codes are written ultimately leads to arguments that may not be your own and may not be what you actually agree with. And this is my strongest argument as to why we should be careful about the usage of AI, especially within writing. Regardless of developments in software and technology, the human experience is unique and your voice is one that matters. However, if you let systems such as AI be the one directing the wheel, then ultimately your arguments, your read on evidence, all of those things will be lacking. And that will one, have an impact on your writing, but will also have a negative impact on the way that we develop arguments in the future. And as an academic who is engaging in these conversations about what it is that we bring to the table as scholars, if AI systems exist, that's why I say that AI is a supportive tool and not a shortcut. It should be a way of improving your workflow, improving your day-to-day -day life, but it should not be the solution or the replacement for your own ideas and for your unique voice. Systems such as Cactus AI are excellent for helping you save time on writing citations, editing your resume, indicating similar texts that you might read, or helping to improve the actual quality of your writing by giving it individual sentences or individual paragraphs in order to improve the quality of your prose. The future is bright and in this age of technological advancement, there are so many tools that can help save time and make us more efficient students, writers, and thinkers. Thank you so much to Cactus AI for sponsoring today's video and for you for watching along. I hope that this video was useful and that you learned something and that you are going to be a critical thinker in your usage of AI in the future. So that way you can be a more efficient student and also improve the world with your ideas. Thank you all so much for watching. 
Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button for future educational videos as well as vlogs about my life as a graduate student. We leave for London in less than two months and I am so excited to get working on my dissertation and to take you all along for the journey. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.